This is Fox 49 News at 630. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Lauren Barnes. Mike is off tonight. We begin by showing you this chase involving an affordable towing truck that was chased through Springfield. This ended with the driver in custody on Kansas Expressway this afternoon. That's where we find Carissa Codell at this hour. Carissa, you spoke to some witnesses who tell you other cars were hit in the process before law enforcement could stop this tow truck. Told me they actually saw the affordable towing truck driving erratically after it did not stop for police. An official said that truck nearly hit multiple other cars during this chase. Sheriff Jim Arnott tells us the tow truck driver had to be stopped before innocent bystanders were hurt or killed. I spoke to a woman with affordable. She says the driver was not supposed to be operating a truck today. Now we got here shortly after 4 p.m. That left lane of Kansas Expressway was closed while the driver was taken into custody without incident and the truck was towed. Now traffic was backed up for a while, but everything is flowing again as that rush hour commute winds down and coming up tonight at nine. We're going to show you even more video and an interview with that woman who now is running affordable towing reporting live in Springfield. I'm Carissa Codell, Fox 49 News. Quite the scene this afternoon, Carissa. Sounds like all is well at this hour. Eight people have been arrested after several fights broke out in downtown Springfield on Saturday. Springfield police say the suspects were arrested for various offenses, including resisting arrest, obstructing a city officer, unlawful use of a weapon, and trespassing. All available officers were called out to the scene for a fight, and while they were there, additional fights broke out. Police say one of the suspects broke a window to a police vehicle. Fox 49 Sydney Moran spoke with the Downtown Springfield Association about how it works to keep people safe late at night. A couple years ago, we worked with city utilities and then the, the uh, surrounding businesses and, and city utilities was able to come in and upgrade the, the, the pedestrian lighting here to have all new LEDs, added lighting in the parking lot and really uh, help uh, make a, a difference in this area. Rusty Worley with the Downtown Springfield Association says two years ago, several incidents happened on Patton similar to what happened Saturday night. Since then, Worley says the Downtown Community Improvement District paid for more officers to be downtown on Saturday nights. He also says the association will continue to look at different improvements to help make the area safer, like changing traffic flow when bars close so there's not a mass crowd in the street. One woman who was leaving downtown when the fights happened says she still feels safe going out. We like to have guys there a lot too and then we're always getting dropped off at the bar, at the line where there's a bunch of other people and getting picked up at the bar. Like we're not really walking around downtown at night. And that was Sydney Moran reporting for us. Now to an update we first brought you last night. A second man has died after two motorcycles crashed into one another yesterday in Collins. Early this morning, Ronald Wallace died at a Springfield hospital from his injuries. According to the Missouri State Highway Patrol, a westbound motorcycle carrying a passenger failed to yield to Wallace. Jesse Ray, the driver of the other motorcycle, died yesterday. A passenger is in serious condition. Two men were arrested this weekend after admitting to entering a house in Licking armed with a stick and assaulting three victims. Texas County officers responded to a reported burglary where they found 21-year-old suspects Braden Spangler and Caden Wyant. The victims told deputies that the two men broke into their home while they were asleep. Spangler and Wyant were both charged with assault, burglary and armed criminal action. A person was taken into custody by police after they caused quite the scene on North Glenstone this afternoon. Springfield police say a subject armed with a gun was making suicidal threats, which caused several businesses in that area to close down while police negotiated with that person. They eventually surrendered to officers. Missouri's texting and driving law is now in full effect as of today. Missouri is one of the last states to require cell phones and other electronic devices to be operated hands-free while driving. So here's what happens now. You could be fined $150 if you are caught using your cell phone illegally, if it's in your hand that is. Those fines don't go into effect though until 2025. For now, law enforcement will be providing warnings. So if you get pulled over, it will just be a warning. They're hoping to educate drivers about that new law.
Also making news now, the military's marine transport aircraft is under scrutiny once again after three Marines died in a crash during a training exercise. Fox News correspondent Greg Palcott brings us this story. I would just like to reassure the families who are on the other side of the world that we're caring for your loved ones. Eight U.S. Marines remain hospitalized in the Australian city of Darwin, with 12 being discharged from the Royal Darwin Hospital on Monday. All were part of a group of 23 Marines hurt over the weekend when a Marine V-22 Osprey aircraft crashed on nearby Melville Island, killing three Marines on board. Incredibly lucky, incredibly thankful um, for a chopper that crashes and then catches fire to have 20 Marines that are surviving. The Marines were taking part in a routine 12-day multinational training exercise set to end September 7th. The Osprey they were riding on is the transport aircraft for Marines. It takes off and lands like a helicopter, but during flight it can tilt its propellers and move like an airplane. Operating the instruments of war in peacetime operations can be as dangerous as operating them in combat operations. While the cause of the crash is still unclear, multiple investigations are now underway. A process Australian officials warn won't be easy due to the crash site's remote location. Their focus is also still on the recovery of the fallen Marines. And the priority is the recovery of the three Marines with dignity. Since 2012, there have been five fatal crashes involving Marine Ospreys, leading to 16 deaths. This weekend's crash brings the total to 19 Marines lost. In London, Greg Palcott, Fox News. All right, how about a first check of our forecast tonight at 6.30? Uh, Jamie, fall is in the air. I yeah. think we're going to stop short, though, of saying we're completely done with summer. Yeah, we're not done with summer. I mean, we've got some more heat on the way, uh, but then we're going to hold that off until this upcoming weekend. Outside right now, I, again, it feels like September's right around the corner. And it is, if you look at the calendar. Uh, here we are, we are at the end of the month of August. Uh, certainly feels a lot nicer outside. This is our muggy meter. Of course, last week we were way over here, maybe way over here. Uh, it's still pretty comfortable, uh, but it's going to get even better. I think we're going to find these dew points continuing to drop as we work through the middle to end of this week. 83 is our current reading outside. Here's a look at our forecast overnight tonight. Walk and weather through 8 o'clock. Uh, temperatures thereafter continue to fall out of the 70s and into the upper 60s by midnight. And it looks like a really nice start to our Tuesday with morning lows in the low 60s. And I see some 50s coming later this week before we get back to hot weather and time for that last weekend of the summer season. Uh, more on that coming up, Lauren. All right, Jamie, we'll talk to you then. Also, right around the corner, football season, Branson celebrating because it is official. The contract has been signed and the ink is dry. The Kansas City Chiefs have made Branson the team's official vacation destination. Fox 49's Parker Padgett is live outside Branson City Hall after getting Parker some more details on this new deal. Yeah, Chiefs President Mark Donovan says essentially every season will start in Branson. That's just one aspect of this deal. I'm told that there are at least 5 million Chiefs fans within a 650 mile radius of Branson. And fans here are excited not just to see the two brands come together, but to see what it can do for the region. Excitement and anticipation filled Branson City Hall this morning. A multi-year agreement could mean big things for the area's tourism industry. We, we were paying for the opportunity to be a partner with the Kansas City Chiefs, so there's some dollars that we're putting towards this. Our responsibility is to market the district, which encompasses the Lakes area, Stone County, Village of Indian Point, Branson and Taney County. Not all of those counties, but a good portion of those. Fans tell me this could be the next boom for the area's economy, similar to what happened in the 1990s after Branson was featured on 60 Minutes. This is just like 1992. It really is. And I look for another explosion. Now that Branson's name is going to be out there worldwide, it's going to completely just probably change our whole demographics, you know, as far as people coming to town. Chiefs President Mark Donovan says the area and the football team have similar values. You guys talk about faith, family, flag, and fun. We talk about faith, family, football. 
Um, and at the end of the day, even though we're a worldwide brand now and one of the most successful organizations in all of sports, we're still a Midwestern family-run organization. And when you match all those together, it feels like a very, very great opportunity for all of us. The Taney County Tourism District and the City of Branson each pledged three quarters of a million dollars in this deal. They expect the tourism boost to exceed five million dollars. We're just so excited about kind of pushing out the great word of Branson. And as, as a Chiefs fan, again, I couldn't be happier. I'm told in this deal, Branson will get signage at Arrowhead Stadium, also sponsoring team draft events, as well as sponsoring the Hometown Heroes, which allows the Chiefs to spotlight people in local communities. President Mark Donovan tells me with the Chiefs playing in Germany this season, it gives the city a chance to receive some worldwide exposure, not just here in the States. Reporting live in Branson, Parker Padgett, Fox 49 News. All right, Parker. Yeah, that uh, Chiefs fan base will probably exceed well beyond 650 miles after that Germany game. We're taking a live look outside right now. A couple clouds out there. We're sitting around 80 degrees here in Springfield. Beautiful weather to get out and enjoy some dinner, maybe on the back patio. But don't start decorating for fall quite yet. Jamie's back after this to let us know when, how long we can enjoy these cool temperatures and when a warm-up is on the way. We'll be right back.